it's sort of healthy in science that we have these things called paradigms of the way we think the world works and we tend to get kind of comfortable with them and assume that they really are the world, way the world works. And, and so it's observations like this that stir things up and make people think again. So we talk about M22, Messier 22, which is one of the many globular clusters out there, but it's kind of in the news because there's just been a paper come out this month in Nature about it. Globular clusters are these very old collections of stars. We think they're some of the first bits that formed of the Milky Way. And we think that they formed stars in kind of the same way that stars are forming now, which means that actually you'd have a whole range of stars of different masses, some very big, some very small. When we look at globular clusters now, they only have the low mass stars in them, but that's actually one of the indicators we have that they're very old because High mass stars have very short lifetimes, low mass stars live a very long time. But what happens to those stars? Well, the most massive stars will have blown up as supernovae quite soon after the globular cluster formed. And then what we expect to happen is when very massive stars explode, they leave a black hole behind. But what happens in a globular cluster is that over time, the massive objects sink to the middle. And so these massive remnants, these massive black holes would sink to the middle of the globular cluster. And when you have a whole bunch of black holes all close together, it, it, it turns out that's a very unstable system. What will happen is that the first two black holes will happily sink to the middle, and then they'll form a binary, not a binary star, a binary black hole, a pair of black holes in orbit around one another. When some third black hole comes along to try and join the party, what tends to happen is that as it interacts gravitationally with this rapidly rotating pair of black holes, it will get kicked out. And so you can't build up a whole load of black holes near the middle of a globular cluster. The vast majority of them should have been kicked out. So what you ought to see in the middle is maybe one black hole or at most a binary black hole in the middle of the globular cluster. These are the things which are kind of in the halo of the Milky Way. So when you kick something out entirely, it'll just go out into the halo of the Milky Way. And of course, a black hole, at least a black hole on its own, doesn't do anything very much that we can see. And so you can have this collection of some, you know, there's going to be huge numbers. We're talking about thousands of these things in the halo of the Milky Way. We're just not going to see them there. I like the idea of these lone wolf black holes just roaming. Just wandering around. It's, yeah, I mean, it can't be much fun for them, but that's kind of what the theory predicts. And that's why this paper is interesting and made it into nature, because actually it says that the theory is wrong. Oh, you always do this. You tell me some interesting fact and then tell me it's not true. But that's the, well, I mean, you know, that, what I've just told you is the conventional view. It's what we think, the way we think things work at the moment. And the reason why this paper is interesting, the reason why it's in nature, isn't because it doesn't just confirm what our prejudices were. It actually says, hang on a minute, here's an observation which suggests that that's not what really happened. What these guys have done is they made a very deep radio map of this globular cluster and they found a couple of objects quite near the centre but when they studied the kind of radio emission they're seeing, and in particular the absence actually of X-ray emission associated with them, they came to the conclusion that these are very probably quite massive black holes. And there's two of them, and they're both quite close to the center of this particular globular cluster, which is not what's supposed to happen. So they're not one of these tight binary systems where they're orbiting around one another. They're, just, they're actually just two black holes coexisting quite happily in the core of this particular globular cluster. What these authors point out is that for every black hole like that, there's probably 10, 20, 30, even 50 uh, black holes that aren't in a binary that we can't see at all. So the fact we see two in this state suggests there's somewhere between 10 and 100 black holes in the centre of this globular cluster, or for whatever reason, happily coexisting there. In some sense, it's not a definitive result on its own. There's a lot of follow-up work needs to be done. They need to make similar kinds of observations in other globular clusters to say, is this really a one-off, or is this something that actually is quite common in globular clusters? But it's just sown that seed of doubt. So actually, even if it turns out that there is some perfectly reasonable explanation for this, and actually our original picture was quite right. It's a very healthy thing to have these kind of observations come up from time to time, because they make us kind of question these basic assumptions we've been making all along.